Hello, hi, and welcome back to another reading vlog. This one is going to be a little bit different because you can see a strange person walking around in my background. <laughs> this is Lexi. Hi, Lexi. Um, I have just picked up Lexi from the airport. She is coming to hang out with me this week for my birthday because I turn 30 on Monday. We're not going to talk about it. I'm just going to be 29 for forever. It's fine. I already yeah, I like an old lady anyway. But it... <laughs> But where I was going with that was, it's been freaking cold here, like 12 degrees. I've been snowed into my house. If you've watched any of my other vlogs, then you know that I was literally stuck inside for a week and off work, which was great. But then I had to drive to Nashville to pick Lexi up and there was snow everywhere. It was really, really pretty. But I figured what better time to read winter fantasy romance than when it's actually cold outside because that doesn't happen here. So I'm gonna take full advantage of it. I have a TBR of three books tentatively. We're gonna see if I actually get to those three books. But the first one is one that is coming tomorrow and that is The Court of Winter by Krista Street. This one is one that I just randomly found. Like I didn't really know anything about it, but it sounds interesting. It is a fey fantasy romance and it has the enemies to lovers trope, which you guys know is my absolute favorite and about a girl that has always been told that she is defective, which could be a really interesting setup. I'm hoping for a lot of good banter. You know that I am always here for the banter. Then I also really want to read Once Upon a Broken Heart. I did not know that this was winter and went on Reddit, who am I? And asked for recommendations for winter fantasy romance. And this was actually brought up several times. It is a young adult. It is a like fairy tale-esque vibes. Honestly, don't know a ton about this book other than it is everybody's entire personality that has read it so I need it to become my entire personality too so this is one of the other options and then I also have Frost by C.N. Crawford I've really been wanting to read a book by C.N. Crawford I think she's gonna be at a polycon so that just makes this absolutely perfect do I know anything about this book I don't but it's about a birthday so what better day to read it than on my birthday it says on the worst birthday of my life I really hope that that's not mine. I come home to find my boyfriend in bed with another woman. But anyway, it sounds like it could be really fun. I know that there's like a competition element, I think, to this first one, Tori said. So I'm excited to give it a try. But yeah, those are the books that I'm aiming to read this week. We're going to see how many of them I actually get done and what kind of chaos we can get up to. Lexi's over there just chilling. Not fair. I wish this I was. Couch is so comfortable. Yeah, you napped on it earlier. I did. <laughs> Um, but we're about to go out to dinner. It's going to be great. I am going to eat my weight and steak, maybe order some red wine and make David drive. We'll see, but it's going to be a great time. So I have started Frost by C.N. Crawford and I'm only 20 pages in and I'm already considering DNFing this. So far I just really am not liking the writing style. She like had an interaction with her boyfriend when she found him sleeping with another woman on her birthday and it was just very, I don't know, it was just really cheesy honestly in the way that it was written. And then she storms out of there and goes to her best friend and she's supposed to be getting like this best friend's pep talk. And it just, all of it's been very, very cheesy. That on top of the fact that I don't mind an urban fantasy setting and I don't mind an urban fantasy setting that is real world based. Like it doesn't usually bother me, but this is way in your face and over the top and I, I'm not loving that. It's really throwing me off. We're talking about Tinder and 90s Angelina Jolie with her big lips and it's just it's 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 trying too hard it's doing too much and it's trying too hard then like there's this competition element about the Sealy King on the back and we've just gotten to where that was announced and it looks like it's pretty much just gonna be The Bachelor 
which I like The Bachelor. No shame. I actually watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette still, I guess maybe a little shame, but like, I don't judge. But I don't think that combined with how cheesy this is already, that that's going to work for me. But the love interest hasn't been introduced yet. So I'm still like, maybe I wait until he comes around, even though I don't like our female main character. Maybe he'll work for me. I don't know. I'm going to keep reading for now. But I think that the writing style has just really thrown me off. And like, I want to like this, but I'm not sure that it's going to work for me. So we're on sprints. I am going to keep reading it for now. But like, mm, I'm unsure. Hey friends, we are currently at Barnes and Noble. We cannot have Lexi here without going to a bookstore. I feel like that is just something that we have to do. Um, we're going to film a very exciting collab video. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And Lexi's going to torture me. It's going to be great. And I'm also obviously going to bookshop for me. I don't really have anything super in mind because the two books that I want, actually the three books that I want don't come out until either Tuesday or a week or so from now. I would love to grab Feybound. I really want to get the Tainted Cup, which I think is early February. And then of course, Crescent City, but that is like embargoed. There's no way I will get that today. But we will check to see if any of the releases are out early. I'll see if anything else catches my eye. But yeah, we're just going to go do some book shopping. And of course, you had to come with us. Okay, but can we get in without dying? Remember, this is a fantasy romance winter style vlog. Oh my God. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. If I go down, Please don't laugh at me. Call the ER. <laughs> this is cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. We've made it. We've made it. One, two, three. Solid ground. Thank God. That sounds really I good. Want this one, I want. I'm like, I truly want one, two, three, four, five. This just like I've never heard of this, but it sounds really good. I want like ten of these. <laughs> Why is this happening? I mean, I really personally think that Vampire Diaries needs to be yours. That is one that is not on my list. Okay, but like this one also sounds really good, and I feel like if I get two, if I get three, I have to get four. Yes. This table is good. Like, why did we come in the YA section? Lexi is currently shopping in my closet of shame. I am holding a book in between my legs. <laughs> books are falling and I ran, <laughs> I ran out of hands. There is so many books in there. Okay, so listen, these are all of my unhaul books that just have not made it to Goodwill yet. Um, and I'm glad I waited because now Lexi can go shopping for free. So it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a consumer. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't like that book. <laughs> I just realized that when we got back from the bookstore, I never gave you guys a final book haul. So I'm going to share with you guys what I got on that Barnes & Noble trip, but we also went back the next day. We filmed a very special collab video that you guys will see in about a week. And after that, I was really in the mood to go buy books. So we left, we went back to Barnes & Noble and I bought some more books. Then because we were right next door to the Cheesecake Factory, I had to get me some s'mores cheesecake. It was so good perfect birthday cake. It was amazing. It was incredible. So I wanted to share with you guys the six books that I did buy on our two combined trips. So from the trip that you guys saw, I actually did not end up getting four. I only got three books because I only really wanted three. And even though they were buy one, get one half off, I was like, I don't really need to buy a book that I'm not interested in just because it's going to be half off. So I ended up, I did get Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer. This book I've never heard of before, but it sounds so good. It's about a girl whose mother harvests Supernatural's body parts and like sells them on the black market. And she just helps her mom. But one day she, her mom goes a little bit too far. She decides to save one of the boys that her mother was trying to kill. And instead her mom sells her in his place. It sounds so good. I just, I love this cover. I think that it is incredible. So I did decide to pick this one up. This was all YA horror, by the way. Then I also decided to get um, Delicious Monsters by Leslie Sambury. This is one that Lexi also got. It was not on my radar at all until she suggested that I pick it up. 
And the tagline just says, Daisy sees dead people. Apparently she is able to see ghosts and her mother inherits a secluded mansion in Northern Ontario. This is where she spent her childhood summers, but the house is nothing like Daisy expects. And she begins to realize that the supernatural may be no match for her mother's secrets. Then we jump forward a decade later and we have Brittany who is desperate to get out from the thumb of her abusive mother. And she gets an offer to stay at Miracle Mansion. Brittany investigates the mansion in the present, Daisy's story runs parallel in the past, and both timelines propelling the girls to face the most dangerous monsters of all, those that hide in plain sight. Sounds really interesting. I'm super excited to give this one a try. And then I also ended up getting The Sacrifice by Rin Chapeco. I did not realize this was by Rin Chapeco when I picked it up. I just loved the cover. I have to read you just like the top blurb of this. Usually I try to give you guys synopsis, but this one's too good. He who offers the sacrifice controls the god eye. The first to feed, the second to seed, the third to wear, the fourth to birth, the fifth to serve, the sixth to lure, the seventh to consume, and the last to wake. It sounds very interesting. I don't know what all of that means, but I am super excited to find out. So those were the three young adult horrors that I bought on my first trip. And then on the second trip, I did get another buy one, get one half off deal. I found Shards of Glass by Michelle Sagara. I think that's how you say that. This is a school setting fantasy that I've never really heard of before, although I have heard a lot about this author and I'm looking for more school setting books. So keep your eyes peeled in my community tab. I will be sharing that. This one is about the academia. It is a proving ground for rulers of the world, but it has been frozen for centuries and now its slumber has ended and the new chancellor, an orange eyed dragon, has reopened the lecture halls and its dorms. This one just sounds pretty cool. Like I said, I needed some more school setting books, so I picked that one up. And then I needed another one to get the buy one, get one half off, so I decided to pick up the KG Preservation Society by John Scalzi. Lexi read this one and said that she really enjoyed it. It really surprised her, and she thinks that I would like it too. It is like a, I think it's a dystopian science fiction type story. I don't know. She said it was really good, and honestly, that was enough for me to pick it up. I think Emma also really enjoys that one. And then I also grabbed, of course, Miss Laid in Parts Half Known by Shonda McGuire. This is the newest Wayward Children's books about children that go to their perfect worlds, but the perfect worlds are not always what they seem. This one has dinosaurs. I love me some dinosaurs. I'm just excited to continue on in this series. So this was my little stack. I quite like my stack. I'm very excited to get to these. A couple of these I probably will be getting to sooner rather than later. Um, I'm doing a 24 hour reading vlog here pretty soon. And so I'm hoping to get to a few of these because I think they'll be fast paced reads. But yeah, this was my little haul. Now back to past me who will continue to tell you guys a little bit about Frost. I'm roughly halfway into Frost now and I'm still just really not having the best time. I will say that it has gotten better since we got past the initial like setup, but the main character just is completely obsessed with her cheating ex-boyfriend and not in a way that's like, I don't know really how to describe it, but she just cannot like every other sentence is, do you think his parents have seen Do you think that he this? Do you think that he that? And I'm like, move on girl. Like you gotta keep, gotta keep chucking. We're 150 pages into this book. Like I'm tired of hearing about your ex cheating boyfriend. We got competitions to deal with and, and the competition aspect hasn't even really started. We've got some mean girls. It's very tropey and not necessarily tropes that I love. So I'm just struggling with it quite a lot. I'm honestly tempted to put it down for now and pick up a different book and see if I'm vibing with that one a little bit better. And then maybe once I finish the rest of the books in the TBR, maybe I will come back to this one and finish it off. I think that's what I'm going to do because right now I'm not having a great time with this and I don't want to continue to just anticipate that I'm not going to have a good time. I would rather put it down, start fresh again later and see if I'm enjoying it a little bit more. I don't know whether I'm going to pick up A Court of Winter by Krista Street or if I'm going to pick up Once Upon a Broken Heart, but I will let you guys know when I decide. Yeah, I just assume when I don't know what something is, it's an American thing. But I did kind of know what this is, but not like I've never, you know, you know. That's fair. So. Yeah. It's just a show or like a station where they just sell people. My grandma. No, they don't sell people. <laughs> people sell things. I assumed it was like the shopping channel. It yeah. is like it's live advertising. It yeah. is. My they don't buys sell people. Too much. 
Hello, hi. So it is now, what day is it? Tuesday? Tuesday morning, afternoon. I don't know what time it is, but we are kind of slowly starting getting ready to take Lexi home, which is big sad. She does have to fly home. I don't know why. I told her we could become roommates and she didn't need Adam anymore, but she disagreed. So I have actually gotten to 20% of A Court of Winter by Krista Street. This is the book I decided to go with. I am going to be listening to Once Upon a Broken Heart on my way home from taking Lexi to the airport. So I'll have an update on that for you guys here shortly. But this one is about a world where the Fae are living in a kingdom of winter and all of their crops are mostly dying. It's really, really harsh winter and our main character and her sister are trying not to starve in this land and they all have to like work this land in order to send rations to the court of winter's prince. And she is considered a defective. She does not have wings and she has black hair instead of white hair and doesn't really have an affinity, meaning she doesn't really have magic, but she has her garden and she loves to work in her garden and it it is doing really well and that's how she and her sister are not going to starve for the winter. One day they are working the fields and the prince of the winter court comes and takes her away from an unknown reason and she ends up going to the kingdom I guess. I don't know I haven't really gotten that far yet but so far I'm liking this well enough. The main character is a little bit too cinnamon rolly for me. She's kind of meek. You guys know that I like me a strong-willed stabby female main character. She is I think under the surface I can see a little bit of that but for the most part right now she is a little bit more meek than I typically prefer. We've only briefly met the prince but he's kind of brooding and I think I might end up liking him. The writing style so far is a little too formal for me in the dialogue. It feels kind Kind of forced and a little bit repetitive but that's not terribly uncommon um i find in self-published fantasy romance especially until they kind of settle in a little bit into the writing and into the story so definitely we'll be continuing this one it's a super fast read and i'm overall having a good time i am home from taking lexi to the airport and it is the biggest sad of sads because I didn't want her to leave. I wasn't ready for her to leave yet. She was only here for like four days and honestly it wasn't enough, but we have already made more plans to hang out again. I will be seeing her along with some other incredible, amazing people at a polycon. So it's gonna work itself out. But her flight was in Nashville during rush hour traffic. So it took me quite a bit of time to get home. Traffic in and of itself was not like horrible. It was just not moving super quickly. We were moving, so it definitely could have been worse, but it just, it was rush hour traffic, it was slow. Because of that, I had about three hours to listen to Once Upon a Broken Heart, and I got almost finished with this. I have about an hour of listening time left, so I probably got three fourths of the way through it or so, and I figured I needed to give you guys an update because obviously I didn't update you in the middle of it because I was driving down the road. So this one is following Evangeline who is completely and utterly in love and she finds out that her stepsister is going to be marrying her beloved and she needs to stop the wedding. So she goes to the church of the Prince of Broken Hearts and pleads with him to stop the wedding at all cost. She ends up getting herself in a bit of a pickle, making a bargain with him. The wedding is stopped with some serious consequences. Things happen, I won't really give you a lot more details than that, but she ends up finding herself in the Northlands trying to seduce a prince. And this is very whimsical, very fairy tale retelling, very once upon a time vibes. However, I did go into it knowing that, which I think it really helped me because whimsy, not usually my thing. You guys know that that's not something that I typically gravitate toward. However, so many people love this book that I just could not pass up the opportunity to at least try it. And I will say that I'm enjoying it. I definitely have some issues with it. I think that this book is mostly just set up for the first, I don't know, two thirds of the book. We're setting up what I'm assuming is going to be the plot in the future books. And so to an extent that was a little bit boring, it definitely is a little over the top on the whimsical, on the magic. It, it doesn't give you a lot of explanation into the world or the magic system or anything like that. It's just kind of accepted that that's the way that things are. Things are a little quirky. We have bells that have sentience and we have doors without locks and prophecies and that kind of thing. But again, I went into this knowing that. I will say that the love thing is just a little bit overdone for me, but again, Again, that's kind of the whole premise of the book. We've got a prince of broken hearts. We've got princesses in peril. Like that's just kind of the point of the story. However, I do think the further that I'm getting into this, the more that that is starting to settle down. And while it's still the blanket of the story, it's not the sole focus. Now we are getting more into this prophecy and what is this certain thing that's looming over everybody, these tales. And I think I'm gonna really enjoy the ending of this. And I do think that I will continue on to the next book. 
books because the setup right now at the end is something that I'm really enjoying. I liked the beginning too. I wasn't just hating my time with the beginning or anything like that. It's just not really a me book. So I wasn't feeling five stars, but I definitely was feeling three stars. As of right now, I still think it's going to be a higher three star. I think this is incredibly well written. I definitely see why people want to highlight in this and make it their entire personality because it has some beautiful prose and some beautiful quotes in it as well. So overall, I, I am having a good time with this. I'm glad I picked it up. Definitely not super with wintery vibes like the wintery vibes are there but it's mostly just set in the north so it's not super super cold but the wintry vibes are there. So I wanted to give you guys an update on this. I will probably finish this on my way to work tomorrow. Yes, I do have to go back to work, which is a lot of not fun because I have honestly been all but completely off since Monday a week ago. So it's been a week and a half since I have actually had to go in and work a full day of work and I'm slightly dreading it. But I will, like I said, read this on my way to work. I'm also going to try to get a little bit more of Court of Winter Red at work because I updated you guys on that one this morning. So I'm reading kind of both of these in tandem right now. Court of Winter didn't have an audiobook, so that's why I decided to pick this one up instead of continuing on in that one. But anyway, I've been rambling for way too long now. I am going to go sit on the couch and try not to miss Lexi too much. Okay, so it has actually been a couple of days. I am sorry about that. It's been a little bit of a wild week since I finished up Once Upon a Broken Heart, but I kind of needed to sit on my thoughts and my reading for this book when I finished it. There were a lot of things about this that I really enjoyed. I actually surprisingly liked the whimsical nature of it. I thought that it leaned into that really hard, but it also worked for it. I liked Jax. I thought that he was an intriguing character. Overall, I really enjoyed the meat of the plot. I want to know more about this, what was it, a arch of some sort. So I wanna know more about all of that. I do think that I will be continuing on in the series. I think that occasionally the like love aspect of this just leaned a little too hard for me and I did struggle occasionally kind of not really finding that super believable, but at the same time, it definitely leans into that like Disney once upon a time type of trope. I think my biggest issue with this was actually our main character, Evangeline. She has this really annoying tendency to hear something about someone and automatically believe it. Then when she goes to that person and they deny, 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 she's like, oh, well, I must've been wrong immediately something else happens. No, you're evil. And I'm just like, mm, yeah, make up your mind, make up your mind, either be loyal, don't be loyal, believe, don't believe. But like she is very wish-washy back and forth in how trusting she is and how much she believes people. And I just found that to be a little too much back and forth. It kind of felt like I was watching somebody pay ping pong where it was like, yes, no, I believe you. No, I don't. You're bad. No, you're good. And I was like, whoa, I'm getting a little bit of whiplash here. But overall, I think I'm going to stick with my three star rating for this one. I will be continuing on in the series. And I was pleasantly surprised by this. I'll be honest, this is one of those that when it first came out, I was not at all interested in it. And then the more I heard about it, the more interested I got. So did enjoy that one and will definitely be continuing. And then I needed to give you guys a quick update on A Court of Winter. I think that this one is one of those that I'm going to have a pretty good time with while also having a lot of issues with. It is fun and there are moments of banter which I'm appreciating. I am about 40% into this so far and I feel like I'm still missing the plot. Like I don't really know what the point of this story is and that's bothering me a little bit. It's very much so leaning into their relationship with one another but they still don't like each other which I appreciate. I like it when we've got a super slow burn. We definitely see hints of like them looking at one another and like realizing hey that other person might not be as bad as I thought. And so I think that that part, it's, it's still a slow burn. There's still some tension. I'm enjoying that. I like the magic system. I think that it's interesting. I like the setting, but I need to know what's going on. And I don't feel like we're getting that. I feel like this is just kind of existing and we're not moving anything forward. And part of the reason for that is one of my biggest pet peeves ever. That's where one person asks, why are you doing this? And the other person goes, I can't tell you. And they're like, why not? And the other one's like, mm, just not right now. That's happening over and over and over again. And the only point of it, at least right now, is to make me keep guessing and want to know what's going on. And instead, I'm just getting irritated. So I need some answers. I need for us to kind of 
start to learn more about what's going on, or I need there to be a reason why he's not telling her. If there's a reason, I'm good with it, but there's no reason as of right now, so I'm just irritated. So overall, I am enjoying this one. It also feels like it could be a three star, but I'm still having fun with it. It's a super, super quick read. I think I'll be able to finish this tonight. If I do, I will check back in with you guys, and then we'll decide if I'm gonna read another book for this vlog since I DNF Frost, if I'm gonna finish Frost, what I'm gonna do, but we'll kinda see where I'm at once I finish this one. I'm very ill-prepared. Let's shut this so you guys cannot hear my dryer going off. And then I don't know where my book is. So where is my book? Where is my book? Ha! I found the book. Okay, so now that I've found the book, let's do my final update on A Court of Winter. I have very, very, very mixed feelings about this because on the one hand, I liked the writing. There were aspects of this book that I liked. It was easy reading. I thought that the magic system was cool. I ended up liking Alara pretty well. She does have some backbone moments, which I appreciated. I liked the prince, but there were so many things in this that I also really didn't like. So I'm struggling with how I'm going to end up rating this. A couple of things that got on my nerves were her calling him my prince constantly. Like I know that that's the proper way to address him. And like, I didn't have a problem with it in the beginning, but as they were growing closer and she was like sniping off and back talking him for every other sentence to be my prince, like it, it was just, I don't know, it, it got on my nerves a little bit. And then she just, there's something that happens with her family that involves him. And it's just so glossed over so many times where they'll be talking about it and then they'll just immediately change the subject. And I'm like, no, go back to that. We need to have that discussion. We need to find out what happened. And then it kind of gets resolved, but she just accepts his apology and doesn't question it, even though it's shaped her entire life. I don't know, it just felt very lackluster to me and combined with the whole not giving answers thing which happened so much i was just annoyed i i don't know i liked parts of this book there were moments of good banter but overall it just missed the mark for me a little bit i think it hit the winter vibes i think it got across what it was trying to do like i said i liked the magic system but i think if you are just wanting an easy quick winter read and don't want to have to think too hard pick this one up if you're looking for a lot of in-depth like romance and fantasy this one's probably not going to work for you but i will say it is super super slow burn not a lot if any smut in here so that was also a plus for me so yeah, that is my final thoughts on that. And then we have now finished all of the books for this vlog. Overall, not, not a terrible week. I had so much fun with Lexi. I'm so sad that she's gone. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. We will be meeting up with Lexi again in April along with some other amazing fans for a polycon and I could not be more excited. So if you guys are looking for more of my romantic content, you want to see what I'm thinking of other fantasy romance reads, check out this video here. I think that you will really enjoy this reading vlog. I read for 24 hours straight, stopping the timer anytime that I wasn't picking up a book. It was a lot of fun and I got some really good romance fantasy reads in there. If you just want to let me know that you were here and hanging out, leave me a snowflake emoji. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are down in the description box below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!